people who are coming to the event, um, it's to try hopefully to help them with one or two new ideas, a little bit of inspiration. So I've been a coach since 1994, because I haven't been to drama school, I didn't have any money. And I'm national coach, event coach for High Jump, uh, and I've been there since 2009. Through my work, um, I noticed that when kids come into primary one, they were lacking the fundamental skills. Um, so just by today, just listening to them, and now I realise that I need to broaden uh, the programme to working on posture, just through what uh, Fuzz was talking about, which um, really interests me. So that's great. Definitely has given me a lot more ideas where I can uh, kind of broaden the programme that I'm currently delivering. So yeah, it's been great. As a, uh, a coach, I learned from people who I met for one day. So it's what you take from that one day. So I'm bringing lots of ideas and information from coaches I've learned throughout the world, and I'm sharing those ideas with the young coaches here. Now, if they take some of those principles going forward, they're actually taking 25 years of experience. And I've taken 25 years from various coaches all over the place. So there's huge principles they're learning. Um, it all depends on whether the athletes, or whether the coaches, take up the mantle of the stuff that we've given them. It's really hard to define whether or not it's a success until five years time. Because if you see a difference, in the movement, in the long-term development of the athletes, in the reduction in injury, we can say, yeah, it probably had an effect, but it's very difficult to say it immediately. I know of many great coaches who are really great communicators, who are quite good athletes, especially in track and field. Nearly every coach I had came from a teaching background. They weren't top-level athlete themselves, but they understood the principles and shared that those principles. So I think that anybody can become a good coach if you're A, willing to learn, and B, you have an open mind to new ideas. So it's not just being able to learn, you've still got to have to have an open mind to take those principles forward. Obviously, athletic prowess, so much of it is based on genetic advantage. So if you're built a certain way and you want to be a marathon runner and you're 100 kilos, let's stick to shot putting. It's been an excellent morning um, and the short while that we've had so far, uh, I've learned a lot for myself and for obviously helping coach others, so it's been very good so far. Is it the athlete's last coach or their first coach? I mean, that's an interesting one. Who knows? So, who got Roger Black to that level where he's winning Olympic silver medal? At 20 years old, he won the Commonwealth Games and the Europeans here in Scotland. 20. He's 30 in that picture, winning an Olympic silver medal. What happened in that 10 years? Where did it all go right and wrong for him? Because it obviously went wrong. He started off being one of the greatest athletes ever this country has ever produced. No one has ever repeated what he's done as a 20-year-old. Yet it took him 10 years to get to that level. Was it his mum and dad? His brothers and sister? His first school teacher? His first club coach? Maybe Mike Smith from Southampton? Or was it later on in his career, a guy called Tony Lester? I don't know. I think you can you can certainly learn. You can you can anybody can learn and, and improve and, and, and develop themselves. I think you have to have a you have to have a, a, a certain calling towards it. It has to be something that you want to do. Um, and particularly if people becoming involved in coaching at a young age, that can often mean they stop competing. So um, there's a whole number of reasons I think why people become involved in coaching. I think we underestimate the value and the importance of school teachers, parents, and club coaches in that long term. Uh, uh, window, if you like. But we see this window at the top, the Olympics, the Commonwealth Games. Everyone says, wow, those coaches must be the best. But getting the first 230 centimetres was much more difficult than getting the last four, I can assure you. It was fascinating at the session that I had just now. I had non-tennis people coming to that. So again, that we learned a little bit from their sport. And from my perspective, to meet with the other coaches that are presenting as well. And it's a comfort zone in some ways, because the presentation that Fuzz did at the beginning, it made you think, yeah, I'm, I'm doing a lot of that. Uh, oh, there's something I haven't quite done. I'll remember that and try to uh, build on that for my own coaching. There are not many gold medalists, that's the trouble. There are so many. We need such a broad base. Not everybody wants to be a gold medalist and sometimes we have to look at is it the youngster that wants it or is it the parent um, and that's always a difficult one.